We had the Alpha Cool Core 120 at 3000 RPM, which was a uh, damn. But now, now it's time for the big daddy. Meet the Alpha Cool Core 120 at 4000 RPM. This episode is brought to you by my additional disability plan because there is just no way in hell that my general public health insurance will pay for what I'm about to do to myself. Before we talk any specifics on this monster, let's go to the benchmarks because oh, oh my god. Allowing the big daddy of regular size 120mm fans to spin at its full 4000 RPM in our hybrid case almost heatsink benchmark catapulted it up to the very best. At 33.9 degrees C above ambient, this is one of the best 120mm fans I have ever touched. The only thing beating it is the Galit Gale Extreme, a 38mm stick, 6000 RPM fan. What the hell? This thing beats everything. Well, of course it does. It's, it's spinning at 4000 RPM. What, what did I expect? But what about the noise to performance ratio, because unlike the other two core fans, this one does not come with the same fan wing design. It's a lot different than the other two. No, let's get this straight out. It's, it's weird. It now has a 7 much less bent design and it still has a dual ball bearing instead of the fluid dynamic which was used in the 2500 RPM one, which does make sense. I don't think there is a single fluid dynamic bearing surviving this level of speed. And while spinning at up to that speed, it's pushing 119.8 CFM at up to 12.67 millimeters of H2O. Absolutely brutal hardcore. It is supposed to yell up to 49.5. We will get to that, but let's first take a look at that noise to performance graph. Oh yes, this is a lot better. Mind you, it is still very far from good. This is good. This is one of the best. And this is the Core 4000. But compared to the other two Core 120mm fans we had, from about, let's say, 50% of its max speed down to 10% of it. In that complete range, the Core 4000 beats the crap out of both other fans. Just that, unfortunately, it did not beat any other fan, because keep in mind that the corner you want to be in is here. But still, exceptional performance, and considering what it is or how quickly it spins, this is actually not that bad. It even gets quite close to an Arctic P12 Max, which congratulations. Now let's briefly talk about the bullshittery that was me buying this fan. I swear, when I made the purchase list for, the, for this review cycle, this is what the product page looked like. I swear. But two, three days after that, when I finalized the whole thing, it changed to this. And this is also the fan that I got. It is the only core fan that does not come with that 9-wing design, or the only 120mm version. Now everything else is still somewhat the same. It comes inside the same white cotton box with nothing on there except for a small sticker. It, it still has a PVM connection, which this time is only 30mm long and ketchup and mustard. And for the love of God, who thought this was a good idea? Why are you doing this to us? It's not like cable mess is already an issue. This is just like next level issue. And the frame changed too. Now we don't have the same type of reinforcements we did before. We still got some, just different and very much OEM lookalike if you ask me. But still, this is a different fan. And again, I swear, they changed the product page at some point. And I can partially prove it. If you go onto the product page of this Core 4000 and you look at the data sheet, you will get this. Oh, 
cool, oh, it's the 4000 RPM model, but with an image of the other two. Huh. Hmm. And if you download the package for the product images, you will again get the new design with a sticker on the back saying it's the Core 120mm 4000 RPM. And get this, even the model number on the image lines up with the one on the back of my fan. The only discrepancy in my whole theory here is the drawing on the last page. That one definitely is the fan that I got. Now. Wait, after spending a bit too much of my time on Alpha Cold's website, I found this. This is some older fan. Unfortunately, I'm unable to say when this thing was really released, but based on how the data sheet is designed, I'm guessing that it's been a quite a few years. But the numbers line up. Cable length, CFM, noise, everything lines up, even max amps. I think what I got is actually the older fan with a new sticker on it. Now, very important, that does not change a thing for the review part. If you buy a core, 4000, this is what you get, period, and this is what we review, period. And it is likely to stay that way forever. But I have a theory. What I believe what happened here was that they developed the core series somewhere. I don't know if AlphaCool has like their own product line, production line themselves, but I guess they got some sort of partner that builds everything for them somewhere deep in, in China. And what I believe what happened here is that they specified those new core 25, 30 and 4000 RPM, but once the first batch arrived, the 4000 RPMs just did not survive. Take a closer look at how the other two are designed and if you now take any fan spinning at 4000, 5000, even 3500 RPM, those longer blades disappear. And they do that because at some point, at some speed, they will just straighten up and touch the outer border, grinding it then breaking down and potentially even exploding into a thousand pieces. Now, I am just assuming here, I have no idea nor have I talked to anybody at AlphaCool about this, but it really seems to me like they got the badge, listed it and tested them after the fact and then boom, damn, what should we do? Well, we got those old IES fans and hey, they are spinning at 4000 RPM, let's just replace the sticker and boom. Discrepancies on the product page. Now, I'm not blaming AlphaCool for any wrongdoings here. If I am right, if, then they delisted or changed a product because of a problem. And I was just the lucky guy who visited the website in the right moment to witness it. But it was the best thing they could do to prevent any harm from happening while still delivering on the promise of a 4000 RPM fan that puts every other 120mm fan to shame. And god damn, they did it and thank god it doesn't cost the same amount. Max performance is a complete joke. This ain't funny anymore. And the Noise 2 performance is surprisingly good considering what it is. Because even if they quickly exchange the fan, this is still core. There is nothing to it but it being a fan that can perform. And it truly can surprisingly close to a Nokia NF-F12 Industrial. And if you ask me, that's one hell of a result considering the huge investment that Nokia makes into developing one of those. But let's go to the most important part, the price. This thing will set you back $7.99. $7.99 for this, $7.99 for that line. Sure, that thing is unbearably loud and I do not believe that both the 3000 and 4000 RPM are just as loud as the spec sheet would suggest. I think they switched how they measure in the recent years. But this level of performance overhead for $7.99. But it still isn't the fan for everybody. If you are willing to go for brute force for minimal price, limit the hell out of this fan. It is unbearably loud. But to end this on the biggest joke of the day, it costs less than an Arctic P12 Max. When it comes to budget, like best budget max performance, the P12 Max was just dethroned after like a month. It still got the noise to performance ratio on its side, but goddamn, this thing just creates a vortex behind it. And all of that while still being a 120 by 120 by 25 mil. It's, it's a goddamn regular fan spinning at unnaturally fast numbers. A small note that I don't need to do this time again, uh, this was the only fan that I did not need to press in. 
it didn't make any weird noise. All the other Core Series fans were making a weird noise. They had to be like, Oof. but not this one. This one was working fine. And this kind of proves to me that the Core lineup, there is an issue in production because this one doesn't have it, but every other one has it. So, uh, yeah. But okay, this should be it for Alpha Cool and their Core 120 at 4000 RPM. And if you're looking to see how it performs on top of a radiator, we will need to wait a little bit more because we are still not done redoing all of our fan benchmarks on radiators of different sizes. But once we are done, we are going to have a lot of fun with those numbers. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have memberships, so if you are looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get a new health insurance, because my old one sent me a cancelling letter after seeing the COD 3000 video. Apparently, I am no longer insurable. Nice. Anyway. Thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the P12 Max. It's noise to performance ratio, it's just not the same thing. This has performance on its side, Arctic has the noise. It's just an interesting comparison. But hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye.